Hey guys, I'm Kate. I'd like to welcome you to my first ever YouTube video. I never really planned on making any videos, but I'm actually going to be inviting you along with me in my search for uh, the unicorn. I don't mean the animal. That is the unicorn pack for my upcoming Camino de Santiago. Um, I'm doing the Camino Frances, which starts in saint jean pied de port in uh, the Pyrenee region of France and continues about 500 miles through the north of Spain, through the Meseta, finishing in Santiago de Compostela. Um, <clears throat> and I've been reading a lot about the perfect backpack to bring. I've never done a lot of camping, trekking, hiking, although I guess this isn't really camping, but I've never had to transport a lot of gear around. So I've been doing a lot of research and trying to find the right pack uh, with the best features. Uh, for my specific Camino, I'm going to, going to be starting in the second half of June and finishing up later in July. So, you know, I don't really need a heavy sleeping bag or a down jacket or warm waterproof boots or anything like that. Or at least I don't think I do. So if I need it, I'll buy it along the way is kind of my philosophy. So in this intro video, I just want to tell you guys about the, in terms of the research I was doing, the features that kind of became the most important to me in terms of picking uh, potential packs. Say that three times fast, picking potential packs. And, um, and then the specific packs that I ordered, I'll just show you them briefly. And then after this, I'll have kind of more detailed video for each pack. You know, videos were important to me in helping um, narrow down which packs I wanted to try out first. The problem I found is that um, you know, the reviews that I saw, some of them tended to be just the purely positive aspects. I never heard them say any negative parts of the pack. And as we all know, there is no unicorn pack. I'd love to make one, but there's no pack that has every feature you're always going to want. Um, and also I felt like there were no, there was no mention of when the pack was on kind of the, the, I guess, logistical issues, if you will, in terms of reaching things, pockets, etc. So that's something that I thought would be really helpful and which I'm going to try to do for you guys with the packs that I bought. Um, so I guess first in terms of my criteria, one, um, I didn't even know women's specific packs were a thing, but they are. I guess the straps are meant to fit rather than right across your chest, which could be a little bit more uncomfortable for women than men, um, kind of contour around that and also have different hip belts. Um, one of the issues I found has been with the hip, belt, hip belts. I haven't really loved how they've been contoured. So in the future, I might try a couple men's packs just to see if they work out for me. I know in the forum, the forums that I read, the blogs that I read, sometimes male packs worked uh, better for certain women. So that's something to keep in mind. But I wanted to start with women specific packs. I have about an 18, 18.5 inch torso. Um, so I was usually looking at the larger pack if the pack provided two potential sizes. Um, and I also wanted it to be small between 30 to 50 liters because again, I won't need it for uh, a winter Camino where you need maybe more gear. Um, but also I want to use it as a carry-on because I'm gonna be going through Europe. Uh, I'll be in Europe for a month before and a month after my Camino. And I'll be taking some, I'll be having a bigger suitcase that I'll leave in my Airbnb or whatever. And then for weekend trips, I just wanted a good backpack that um, hopefully can sneak on uh, by carry-on restrictions. Um, so yeah, that was the first, I guess, criteria that I was looking for. Women specific pack between 30 to 50 liters. And then also, uh, wanted it lightweight. I tried to stay under three pounds with the pack because <clears throat> I know they say the more thing, I guess the greater size and the, and the, the more weight you have to put it in, the more stuff you'll bring and you don't want to do that. But I at least wanted the flexibility if I needed to bring an extra pound of something that I could instead of, um, instead of just having the pound in the pack. But I, I may try a couple heavier packs just because I guess at the end of the day, <clears throat> if a pack distributes weight better on your body, it doesn't really matter that it weighs an extra pound. That's just my thought, but I don't know. We'll have to see, I guess. Um, then the, the other main feature I really was looking for was a, what they call a suspended trampoline style back. And basically, as you'll see in most of the packs that I have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the back of the pack is 
uh, usually convex, concave, I don't remember, but away from your back and then there's a mesh panel um, that is actually what's up against your back and that allows for a really efficient heat dis dispersal, dispersion <laughs> off your back um, and just one helps the sweat get away and I'm <clears throat> a sweaty person and I will be walking a summer Camino in Spain so that was important to me but also I just feel like the fewer contact points on my back the better in terms of bliss, or I guess more rubbing, I, you know, in terms of getting those hot spots as they call them on your back, I felt like that was going to be a better uh, fit for me. So I was really excited about packs that had that. Um, the next thing I was looking for was, you know, really padded, well padded, comfortable straps that wouldn't rub if I did decide I wanted to wear like a tank top one day. Probably won't, but um, even with a shirt, a lot of these shirts are thinner, so it actually en ended up kind of working out the opposite, where I thought the really thick padding was gonna be better, but I found that the bags, the packs with the thicker padding sometimes has been less comfortable. Um, and given that I'm not gonna be transporting, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds, I'm hoping my pack's gonna be about 15 pounds or less. Um, <clears throat> really thick straps I don't think is what I need but at, you know so I guess I've gone from thinking thick straps would be great to just looking for straps that feel really comfortable um, and remember because the, the weight's gonna be on your hips and lower back anyway so you having really thick padding on the shoulder straps I kind of saw less utility for after I tried on the packs um, <clears throat> another thing that was important to me was to have some access to the pack that wasn't just through the top because I guess if you're on the trail, there, you know, these packs have a lot of stash and stuff pockets for easy access on the trail. But I guess if for whatever reason there was something I just needed that ended up at the bottom of my pack, because you know maybe you're packing in five minutes at 6 a.m. in the dark um, at the albergue, I really wanted to be able to grab something quickly on the trail. So <clears throat> to the extent that a pack had either like a full around zipper or a side zipper, a bottom zipper, some other way to access the pack, rather than just through the top, like a lot of the smaller bags have, that's some, a feature that I found attractive. Um, and you know, the, I saw other concerns about having a zipper, is that if it breaks, I mean, what's, gonna, what's going to keep your stuff from falling out? But, uh, but what I found is that these packs, the way the compression straps are organized, is that at the end of the day, I'd rather have easy access every day, and if something happens, I'll, I'll deal with it, I'll get a new pack or whatever, but the compression straps allow you to secure the pack in a, such a way that your stuff's not gonna come tumbling out. And I mean, you, all your stuff is typically in stuff sacks, or compression sacks or whatever anyway, so it's big enough that it'll keep it in there even if the zipper doesn't close, if you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing I wanted was um, waist belt pockets. I don't think I'm going to carry a fanny pack um, or hip bag or whatever you want to call it. I just think that having something else strapped around my waist is going to be kind of annoying. So I really wanted good pockets um, that were big enough to fit. I mean, it's, you know, it's the 20th century. I'm a, I guess a millennial or Gen X. I don't know which one, but I, I'm going to have my phone. I want, I, but I don't want to carry it. I don't want it in my pockets of my shorts. I want it somewhere that I can stash it and get it easily for a picture or, or what, you know, to look at my wise pilgrim app or whatever. Um, so having big enough pockets for that was definitely important for me. Um, and something I didn't think about was the zipability of the pockets. And as I'll talk about as I go through each pack in those individual videos, a lot of these pockets are really, really poorly designed. It's as if nobody put on the pack and tried the pockets because you can't, you zip them open and then you can't get them back zipped with just one hand and then where they're positioned to try to get your other hand over to get it zipped, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But there are some stellar packs that definitely stand out in terms of great pockets um, and some that just totally missed the mark. I found in general the Osprey packs, their pockets were not good for this. I guess you could keep the pocket open but then it sort of defeats the purpose of having a zip pocket anyway, if you will. So that was important to me. Um, also now water. Water was huge for me and my thing is that because I haven't done a lot of um, trekking and hiking for more than maybe a couple hours, 
Um, I don't have any experience with some of the different water options, like a hydro pack. So the, the, the way I see the options breaking down are having, um, keeping a bottle in a pocket that you reach around, you grab, you drink from, you put back, um, using a hydration pouch, which I have no experience with, but it seems like a pretty good idea. Um, the downside being that sometimes it can be annoying, um, to fill if it's like stuffed in your pack in a certain way, it's hard to get in and out on the trail. If it opens, could get all of your clothes, things like that. And then the third, which I haven't used yet, but I bought something like this, um, where you actually just attach the, um, was it the screw cap onto your own bottle? Hopefully it fits, but they come with different size um, caps. And then it has the tube that comes around. So it eliminates any problem of um, unreachability of water bottles, which is a big design flaw with these packs that I don't understand. Again, I mean, it's one, it, it, it's a bigger problem than you think. I mean, it's an annoyance, but also if I, some of these packs, when I was trying to do it, it was the point where I actually thought I was going to maybe pull a muscle. Like it was that, I know that sounds exaggerated, but that's how it was. So, um, I haven't tried, um, the, obviously I said the hydration pouch. I haven't tried this yet, but so I guess the long and the short of it is that I wanted a pack that would allow for any of those options because if I want to start with a hydration pouch and I decide I don't like it, um, maybe it's not easy to clean or it's just too obnoxious, I want then to have an easy bottle access. And I've read other options that people have said about like a clip to your, to your strap, to your waist belt. I just feel like if I'm going to be walking 15 miles a day, give or take, something annoyingly swinging around is going to maybe bother me. And I know these are first world problems. The traditional pilgrims back in the day didn't think about these things, but I mean, we do now. I think it's unrealistic to say that these things aren't important to us. So that to me, you know, having different um, access points for my water was important. Um, I also was looking for a front stash pocket, they call it, because I think, especially if you start earlier in the morning, I've lived in Spain before, and even in Sevilla in the south, before the sun comes up, um, you can have some pretty cool temperatures, and sometimes the sun's not really up until 9 a.m., especially in the summer. So the thought of being able to put like a long sleeve shirt or um, a windbreaker or a rain jacket or whatever, just right in the front pouch, um, was really attractive to me. Also because if anything gets wet, I think it just, it's nice to put it there to dry. I mean, I guess you could always clip it on your pack too, but I just, I like having a front stash pocket. So I really in general did not buy packs that did not have that feature. Um, and then what else? Oh, trekking pole loops. I mean, I don't know yet if I'm going to use poles or a single walking stick. I'm going to try with each. I kind of am attracted to the idea of just a single stick um, to switch off because then I always have one hand free. Um, but you can take turns with each hand so you eliminate the problem I've read about of hand swelling. Um, and, but an easy way, if there are areas you just don't feel like using your stick, um, you, you can kind of, they're bungees that allow you to put them to, um, just to like attach it onto your pack as you're walking. So that was, I mean, I didn't see any packs that didn't have those. So ultimately that didn't end up being a make or break. I think every pack I bought has those. Um, as for rain covers, one, again, I'm going to be going when it's not supposed to be super rainy, I hope, but in Galicia, you never know. Um, I didn't, if a rain cover was included, obviously that was an added value because it's something you don't have to purchase. And in general, it tends to be specifically for the pack. Um, but it wasn't a make or break for me. So, because I, I mean, I think even the ones that didn't come with one, they make one that you buy and it's like 20 or 30 bucks. So for me, that wasn't the price. For none of these, the price was a make or break. I figure that um, the one, the couple of things you want to spend money on are shoes, good socks, uh, and an excellent pack that just works for you. So if it had a rain cover, great. If not, it wasn't an uh, end-all, be-all feature for me. So now the, the final list, I guess, if you will, that I chose, and I'll show you each one quickly. I'm just looking at my list here. Um, the I chose one, two, three, four, seven... Yeah, seven packs um, that I bought. And, um, you know, the downside is that I won't get to actually use them out there because, um, you know, the, either return period's too short or that's just, I don't view that as being very ethical. I just wanted to get the pack, see how it felt, load it up with more or less the gear I'm going to have and see how it fits. And it was crazy because 
so here's my takeaway in this video um, and why I wanted to make these videos is because you really can't ask for other people's advice on packs. Um, there's one Osprey that I got that I wanted to love so badly and I put it on and the straps felt terrible on me. They just felt like they would be so uncomfortable the whole time. Maybe it's because I have broader shoulders, I don't know. But by these videos, what I'm hoping that will help you is at least to see some of the features that they have. So if you don't have a lot of time to pick a pack or you don't feel comfortable buying a bunch of them, I mean, probably in total, all these packs cost close to $1,000. And I'll be returning all of them, but one. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, at least this way you can narrow down based on features. I can't help you with fit. I can help you with features. So that is my point here. Anyway. The seven finalists that I picked are, um, this is the first one, it's the Marmot Graviton 36. I love the colors. Um, it's just a good looking bag. It's probably the most lightweight pack I bought, I would say. Um, and spoiler alert, I think for right now it's my favorite. So we'll see, but that's the first one. Um, the second one I bought was the Kelty Sierra 45. Uh, I think this is just a really cool looking pack. Um, I didn't see any reviews of this pack on YouTube, so I thought it would be especially useful even if I don't end up keeping it for you guys to see how I feel about it. Um, the third one is another brand that I really don't see many people talk about. It's called the Mountain Smith Mayhem 35 Women's Pack. Um, it's kind of confusing online. They look the same, all of the uh, Mountain Smith Mayhem 35s. From, my, what, from what I understand, the Huckleberry color is the women's pack, the women's specific pack. And that is this pack here. Kind of a nice color. I do like this pack a lot. I just have fear about these not very soft um, contact points on my back. So we'll talk about that later in that video. Um, then the Osprey Mira 34 is the first of the Ospreys I ordered. I loved all like the pocket layout on this bag. It's the most like a traditional backpack and you just literally have pockets everywhere. Um, what I've come to realize is sometimes with those pockets, uh, it's harder to secure what's in them and you may feel the stuff shifting around on your back. So it's a good and a bad with that, but really great you know, mesh style backing. And this is the only one I got that came uh, with a reservoir or a hydration reservoir included, which is an amazing value. I think it, yeah, it also comes with a rain pack. So in terms of added value, that pack is definitely um, the best. The next Osprey I got was the Tempest 40. I really like this pack. I think it's just a good looking bag and it felt pretty good on my back. Um, it's really lightweight, and I really like the less substantial hip belt, as I said before. This one and the um, Marmot bag, I think, have the, the, the softest, kind of least structured hip belts, which, like I said, feels like it's the best for me. Well, I mean, we'll see when I'm 100 miles into the Camino, but at least for now. Um, the final Osprey I got was the Kite 36. And you may be wondering why I didn't get the um, other Osprey that a lot of people get, and now I can't remember the name. Oh, the Sierra, I think. It didn't have a front stash pocket, which I said for me, if I'm all things being equal, I'm gonna go with the ones that do. I think it used to, but it doesn't anymore. Also, a really good looking bag, but it, this one just, these straps for some reason do, do not work for me. So I'll talk about that more in that specific video. Right there. Um, and then the last one, I love the way this bag looks. Um, is the REI Traverse. Like, I just love these colors. I wish there were better color options for women. I know that's stupid. Like, who cares about the color of your pack? But, I don't know, it's a lot of money, and yeah, I think we like, if we like how something looks, we're gonna feel better with it. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's silly, but I love the colors of this pack. The kind of taupe brown, olive -y, and then the maroon, and the blue accents. I just think it's such a good looking bag. I don't think it's gonna work out for the Camino, but I do kind of want to keep it just for uh, having it as a backpack. Now there are three packs I still might get um, to try because I don't know if I'm 100% sold on any of these packs. Um, I want to try the Granite Gear Lutzen 35, which is a unisex pack. Um, it's a it has a ton of adjustability, ah, adjustability both in the hip belt and in the torso. Um, 
and I don't know, I just think it looks like a really good pack, so I might try that out, and I also haven't really seen any reviews of that online. Um, I might try a Gregory pack, maybe the Maven, um, and I might try a Deuter pack, maybe the ACT Lite 35 plus 10. My problem with the Deuter packs is they just are, they're really heavy in terms of weight, but like I said, maybe it'll fit like a glove and that'll be what I go with. Um, so I will keep you posted on that. I'll hopefully have um, my individual reviews coming up pretty soon. But if you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I, like I said, for right now, I think the Marmot one is my favorite, but um, I will keep you posted on that. And I hope this is helpful, just helping you guys think about what you might put into your thought process as you're going to pick a pack, but remember my advice. I can help you with features, I can't help you with fit. You're really gonna wanna see how a pack feels on your back, shifting around, thinking about if anything is touching you in a way that might be really annoying or uncomfortable or actually hurt after a day or two on the trail. So thanks for watching, I hope this is helpful, and I'll see you guys again soon. Hasta luego.